So we're going to start building this type of drip pattern in Designer. I'm going to start with uh, directional noise. So we just hit space and get this guy. We flip it so it's facing down because that's how our UVs are set up. Let's blur this guy a bit. Not too much. Okay, maybe half set the quality up a bit. And these are pretty patchy now, so we want them to streak a bit more. So we'll use the directional blur. We'll go back and tweak these later. Let's just put in some values that uh, might work. And then we need a gradient. We'll use this uh, axial one that we can actually tweak. So I want this in the center and this maybe 1.25. Make sure this one is also 1.5, otherwise the gradient starts going. If these two are now uh, on the 0.5, it starts to angle. So we just want a gradient like this. And then we'll blend these two together using overlay. An overlay only affects grayscale, so where it's white and black, it doesn't do anything, so it's just affecting the grayscale area. And then if we do a histogram scan here, we can start seeing we get some kind of droopy pattern. Let's try that. We can view this in 3D view just to see sort of where it sits on our actual donut shape. Do another histogram scan here. I'm going to use this for uh, another thing, but we'll need like a sharp mask out of this as well. This looks all right here, but it doesn't look very natural. So let's uh, run this through an edge detect. Let's try two. I'm going to round it off more. Actually, we'll run it off this. We flip it. We have a little issue up here, so let's just do horizontal tiling on this. And then we can blend these two guys together. So we got from this two a little more round, natural looking uh, drip pattern. And we can actually just do that. We can keep track. If we look at our render here, we, we want a little bit more of these uh, droopy bits. And maybe some that actually separate 
uh, as well. So let's grab a curve node here. I'm going to create a little mask out of this area. We're only collecting the droop area. And we'll add a tile sampler. And we'll use this one as a mask. And we'll set this one to something pretty high. And we'll use this disc shape. I guess leave the scale up the scale random a bit. I'm going to do a lot of this position random, but I don't want them to touch too much, so maybe a little bit lower. And we'll enable our mask here. eyeballing this and let's kill a bunch of these yeah something like that and this will run through a non-uniform blur and with this node we can start like uh, streaking these so we'll do invert grayscale here up the samples and the direction and this asymmetry there we go there we have some kind of like droopy icing shapes that we can like add some contrast to and these we can also add to this shape Just need to move them down. We can like extend this up. So we'll make them a little more stretched out. And I think this whole thing we can move up a bit. Looks all right. We can go in here and maybe remove a couple of these by tweaking this mask random. Looks pretty good. Let's move this stuff out of the way. And we'll do another version of what we did here. Run this edge detect again. We invert it. We'll add these together. Try to eliminate some of these guys too. Let's leave it there and we can try it with this. Look 
there to re-roll this guy. Let's just get a different look. That was pretty good. Uh, let's add a directional warp here. And a pearly noise. Just to break up the... Set it to go this way. Just so we don't have this kind of like perfect line, just to get make it look a little more uh, droopy and dynamic. I need to put back one of these transform nodes here too. Move it up. And that looks all right. And now, as we can see here on the inside, it goes all the way down to here, so we we will uh, add a blend node here. Set this bottom value to 0.5, so we only get uh, sort of the outside here. And then we will uh, transform this to create the inside effect. And then we'll combine these two together. But as we can see here, like our UVs are tiling, so it means this interior detail gets squashed. So we can actually take this guy here and stretch it out. And I'm not worried about the tiling because we're gonna, even if it's, you can see how it sort of breaks there. And we can leave that stuff intentionally broken there. So if we do an edge detect here again, it crank up the roundness a bit. And then we blend this on here. We've now fixed that broken tiling here. We can also preview here in our 2D view, like if, if we accidentally break the tiling. So select this node and hit, uh, hit space in here. And you can see here it's broken, but once I add the edge detect here, we have a perfect uh, connection over the edge. Let's move this stuff over and away and save. Let's enable some uh, tessellation and displacement on this uh, donut here as well. So first we want to set our range for this. So what we can actually do here is Set a uniform color, set it to grayscale, and we'll force it to be 16 bit up here. Because we want to use this for height, so we want to make sure we start at 0.5. So we can blend these two together. Put the blend here. Put this one up top. Let's flip these two, and we'll put this one to well, just lower the range of this, or position rather. I would want to do just inflate this shape a bit here first. So we put a non uniform blur here. 
because right now our icing here is binary. And we just want to make it a little bit uh, rounder like this. So we can set this one to 2.5. Set this one to uh, 90. And just crank up our samples here. And let's enable tessellation, make sure that one's on and on the blin here, like whatever material you have from your 3D packages, the name is going to show up there. So for me, it's blin and we'll set this one to maybe two. And this one needs to be hooked up to our height. We don't need to pr uh, preview that in our uh, base color anymore. So let's just do it like this. Looks pretty neat. We can actually go in and, and do some more eyeballing fixes here. That looks all right. We have a really sharp line here, so we can fix that by uh, in this non-uniform blur here, which is creating our uh, our volume here. If we if we blur this input here, just a tiny bit. You see now that thing is uh, a bit better there. I guess we could just um, hook something up to color so we don't have to stare at this uh, gray donut here. And we have our mask, which is just this guy here. Now we can set this one to something. That looks semi-appetizing. A little bit of a mismatch in the shape there. It's fine for now. We'll solve that once we uh, get further. 